If you're using Linux or a Mac, then one option for compiling C programs is to work from the command line uh, using a compiler such as GCC. There's other compilers available, but GCC is the one I have the most experience with. Now, if you're using Linux, I would assume that virtually all distributions of Linux, and there's a lot, but I would assume that virtually all of them come with GCC automatically installed. And so one of the things you can do is, after opening up what's called a terminal window, terminal window, you can do something like this, which GCC, and this shows me that not only is GCC installed, but it's also in what we call my path. It's possible it could be installed, but not in my path, and then I wouldn't I would get an error message. So let's say I did something like this, like which, maybe ASDX or whatever, ASDD, which shouldn't be anything that actually exists. Well, this message is saying, oh, well, it can't find it in these directories. And if you're using Linux, I assume you know what directories are, but this is my path. And it's saying at least there, it can't find anything called ASDD, which I didn't expect. That's why I just made something up, All right? So I do have GCC. Now, if you're using a Mac, you probably don't have a compiler installed automatically. And so you'll have to do some Googling to determine how to get one installed. Uh, it's been many years since I installed a compiler on a Mac. I think at one point I had to use the Xcode software development suite, but that's been many years, so I don't know what the current status of all that is. So just do a search online to find out how to install a compiler on your Mac. It doesn't necessarily have to be GCC, it's just that's the one I know how to use, so I already know some of the command line options. All right, so I like to open up multiple terminal windows. In this case, I'm, I happen to be in the directory called my code, which doesn't have anything, well, it has one program in it. You see over here, same thing. And so I typically edit in one window using an editor called Vim, but I will tell you the learning curve using Vim is somewhat steep. So you could use a graphical editor but if you're going to use something else, and that's perfectly fine, but if you're going to, make sure you use what's called a text editor, text, all right? That will save something in what we would call plain text. There's a number of editors, but if you're also going to go this route, I would suggest you find something that's written to be used by programmers because just a plain text editor is probably too dumb to be of much use. At least with a programming editor, it can try to help you. Uh, in terms of how much it helps you, that depends on the editor. But at the very least, you'd want something that supports syntax highlighting. And what that means is that once it knows what type of file you're trying to edit, it can highlight different things with different colors based upon the particular programming language. All right? So I would edit in one window. So I just like vim, say a.c. Of course, in reality, you'd want something else. Like, well, let's do that. Vim of uh, my example dot C. Now it's ready for me to create something. So I'm gonna do pound include standard IO dot H. And notice the syntax highlighting is already kicking in. If I'd called this my example dot txt, it wouldn't show this in blue and this in a purple color cyan. Maybe is what that is. It wouldn't show that because it would not mean the same things in plain text. But as a C program, the editor is smart enough to understand that this is a preprocessor directive, this is a library. It knows about keywords. Oops, there's a bug. Int main void. Int and void are both keywords, so notice they're in green. And so it's trying to help me out. So if I were to accidentally do this, well, now the syntax highlighting turned off because int a doesn't mean anything. So that's my eye catches that and realizes I'm, I made a mistake. So fix that. Now we come in here. Uh, int A equals 4. Int B equals 13. C, semicolon. Come down a couple lines. C is equal to A plus B. And now I can say printf. Turn out a semicolon. So I'm going to save this, 
And so what does this say? Well, the percent D's are placeholders, and I'll talk about printf more when we talk about statements. But know that this is a placeholder for printing the value of an int. So A was an int, B is an int, C is an int. Whoops, sorry. There's actually a mistake here. So I should only have int one time there. So that was an unintentional bug. So an int plus an int equals an int. These match up in order with A, B, and C. We'll save that, come over here. And now, if I type GCC, my example, that right there, look in the directory, ls, a dot out, which notice that it's green, to indicates an executable. If I do ls dash l, I can see things, a dot out has the x, which means it's executable. It's like a dot exe file on Windows. And now dot slash a dot out prints four plus 13 equals 17. So it worked. And then the backslash n indicates a new line, so that way the cursor was on a, a line different than the output. Now I prefer to make sure that I'm writing C89 compliant code. So I actually do a couple of other things. So let's go in here and change some stuff. So I'm gonna come down here and say int D semicolon. This is legal in C99 and above, and also C++ and Java. So if I go back to my list here, find my GCC, that compiles fine, runs fine. That's legal. Another thing that's legal is slash slash as a comment style. This is a C99 style comment. Save that. GCC incorporates some features of the C99 standard, maybe all of them by now, I don't know. And if that's what you want, that's fine. But since I'm teaching the 1989 standard, I don't want to inadvertently slip in C99 or, or C11, which is a 2011 standard, or C18, which is a 2018 standard. I don't want to slip in things that are legal for those standards that aren't compliant with the 1989 standard. So I'm actually do something like this. So, and we'll come back in a moment and say what the a.out means. Or let's talk about that now. So when I compile that code, I got a.out. And that's my executable. And that's fine if you only care about having executable for the current program. The problem is I might have multiple C programs in the same directory. And when I try to compile each of those using the way that I showed here, each of these will call, be called a.out. But there can only be one a.out in that directory. So the last C program that was compiled will be uh, associated with the a.out I have. So instead, I may want to have executables that are named after the C program that they represent. So if I do this instead, and I can put these in different order, but if I say dash O for output, and then say, for example, my example, and make sure you get rid of the dot C there, if you use tab completion that I did. This says compile this program, my example dot C, but save the executable as my example. So when I do that, now I do ls dash L, and now I can see my example, and notice the size, 12272, which is 12272, because they both represent the same thing. Now I can run it, and it runs, all right? But that allows me then to compile multiple programs. So for example, I had something called ex.c. Let's compile that, gcc, ex.c, dash O, ex. Now I can see I have something called my example, which is the compiled version of myexample.c, ex is the compiled version of ex.c. They both can exist at the same time in the same directory. And that's potentially useful depending on what I'm doing. All right. So back to making sure this is compliant for C89. So how do I do that? Well, I need to add a couple of things. I'm not gonna worry about the dash O, but I could. But I'm gonna add this, dash standard equals C89. You also could say dash ANSI and then dash pedantic. So now when I do this, and we actually want to do this, it gives me errors. So one, it tells me that, oh, you can't use slash slash as a comment style if you're using what it says the C90, which is equivalent to the ANSI C89 standard. Uh, but it also doesn't allow me to declare variables except at the top of a block. And the top of a block is a set of curly brackets. 
So when I said, I declared these variables and then I start doing some things and then I try to declare another variable int D, it tells me that's a mistake by doing, by setting this right here. So both of these are required to get all of the C89 standard elements. All right, so let me take this line right here, move it up, and let's also move the comment down. We'll save that again. Now I'm gonna compile it, let's clear the page. Compile it. Notice now that the only error is that I'm using a C99 style comment style because I moved the int D up at the top of the block. There could be a blank line in there. Oops, sorry. Or a bunch of blank lines if I want, that's fine. It doesn't care about the blank lines. It's the fact that I'm not doing anything between this, these variable declarations and this variable declaration. So this is all legal now. Now, do you want to type this every single time? Well, no, I mean, I don't actually do this every time. What I end up typing is, you'll notice I'll type C89 in my examples. But what I've created is called an alias. So alias C89, and you can see what I've defined is Whenever I type C89, it actually puts in GCC dash ANSI, or I could have said dash standard equals C89, space dash pedantic. It does all this for me every time I type C89. And I have a file called dot aliases, and then I source that file. So if you want to do that, because otherwise when I log out, it would lose this. I could type this on the command line. This right here. Copy that. Each time I logged in, I could do this and then it would work. The problem is when I log out, it loses it. So if you wish to have that be available every time you log in without you redoing it, look at how you would edit and modif or modify these files, either uh, .bash rc or uh, .bash underscore profile. Uh, I don't go into a lot of details and all that. That's something you'll have to do a little research on. But I certainly would rather type C89 instead of typing out that entire thing each time. All right. So now by doing that, I can just say C89 ex or excuse my example dot C. It compiles it. I can run. Sorry, not my dot out, but uh, dot slash my example, and we get this here. And we know it works. Because if I come over here now, change this to 99. Recompile it, rerun it. Oops, what happened there? Did I not compile it? Uh... Oh, sorry. When I when I compiled it like this, I get a new a dot out. I didn't save it as my example. So if I run the new a dot out dot slash, then I get ninety nine plus thirteen equals one hundred twelve. So. Sometimes I want to save the name if I know it's a program I really want to use multiple times. But if I'm just testing out code, I typically just go with the A dot out and don't worry about it because it's easier. All right, so that's your basic approach to uh, creating a program on Linux and then compiling with GCC. How you edit it, it's a personal choice. There are graphical editors that you may want to look into because most people prefer graphical editors. I've just been a long time user of Vim. In fact, I use it on Windows, but I'm a long time user of Vim, and so that's what I'm more comfortable with, and it does everything I want, and I don't have to do a lot of context shifts in my brain. All right, so I get back out. So that's how you would edit this on Linux. And like I said, on Macs for many years, I had the same setup. I'd open up two terminal windows. I would edit in Vim on the left-hand side, compile the code with GCC on the right-hand side. It looked exactly like this uh, once you get it all set up.